so good to see so many of you out this morning as we prepare our hearts to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. And we're happy to have the voices of Siloam with us this morning. And we've got some in the choir and some on the road, uh, front row down here on the floor. So we just want to get together and worship the Lord. So let us go to the Lord and open with prayer first, and then we'll come with a selection from the choir. Father, we thank you for another day for allowing us to come one more time to your house of prayer. Father, we pray for those who wanted to be here but couldn't. Father, we pray that your spirit would go where they are, touch them in a special way, raise them up one more time that they might sing your praise. And for us here, Father, we pray that your spirit just rest upon us, Father, that we might hear from you that we might be able to tell one another of your goodness and your grace, of your mercy and your enduring love for us, Father. We pray right now, Father, that you would be with those who are over us in authority, Father, that you would guide our leaders, that they make the right decisions, that this country be known as a country that honors you. We pray for those who are out of the way, that don't know you in the forgiveness of their sin, Father. We pray that something might be said or done that would show them the way, Father. Be with us, oh God. Speak, God that the word might be what would divide bone and marrow. That we might see ourselves, not look at others, but see ourselves and do what's right in your sight, Father. We give you honor and glory for we know that you loved us Beyond all that we can say or do. But you loved us. You loved us. Let this service bring you glory and honor. And we will give you that praise. That glory. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. 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 The, the choir is going to come with a song, then we'll have our announcements, another selection, then I'll come back with the word. Today we'll, we will be coming from Matthew 19. Matthew 19, 16 through 26. Amen.
Good morning. Good morning. I don't know where Sheila is. Okay. On behalf of Reverend Wayne Johnson and the Silo Missionary Baptist Church family, we extend a heartfelt welcome to our visitors, and we hope you come back and worship with us again. Let us keep our sick and shut-in members in our prayers. The announcements are as follows. Bible study is held each Wednesday at 12 noon. Zoom Bible study is held every other Wednesday night at 7 p.m. The next one will be held on this coming Wednesday, which is June 16th. And we will have church conference on next Saturday, which is June 19th at 12 noon. The Missionary Circle will, will meeting will be held right before the conference at 11.30 a.m. If you would like to pay your tithes and offerings via your credit card, you may do so immediately after service. Please come to the office. Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries from last Monday through today? And I have Terry Cooper's birthday was January 10th. Do we have any other birthdays? What was that again? June 12th. June 12th, and I heard somebody else. June, June 5th, okay, and that's you, uh, oh, Novella, I mean, Irene, okay, okay, okay. All right, uh, can we just get a little bit of happy birthday? May you be blessed with many, many more. Our thought for today, our lives speak louder than our words. This will conclude the announcements for this morning. Thank you.
Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 19, 16 through 26. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why calleth me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. And he said unto him, Which? Jesus said, Thou shall not thou shalt do no murder thou shalt not commit adultery thou shalt not steal thou shalt not bear false witness honor thy father and thy mother and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself the young man said unto him all these things have i kept from my youth up what lack i yet Jesus said unto him, if thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again, I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter in the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, who then can be saved? And Jesus beheld them and said unto them, with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Amen. May the Lord bless the hearers and readers of his holy word. Fathers, once more I stand before your people. I ask now that you would remove Wayne out of the way. Fill this vessel one more time with your spirit that I might speak what you have for your people this day. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Oftentimes, when I go to the scriptures and try to study the word of God, I see something different from when I read them before. When I went through and read this scripture for today, something popped out that I basically didn't see before. I'd seen it, but I didn't really see it. And it was that here was a young man who wanted an easy way out. Now think about it. He comes to Jesus and says, what can I do to gain eternal life? What good thing can I do? What one thing can I do? And I thought about that thing. I said, you know what? That's the way we are nowadays. We want a quick, easy solution. We don't want to go through anything and everything. Just give me, just give me the one thing. But see, God knows our hearts. And he created us so he knows all about us. And standing there before him was a rich man, young and rich, and one who knew the words of God, who had from his youth been brought up to know the laws of God. So when he asked, what, what do I need to do? Jesus said, follow the commandments. And as if to say, well, which one? Now, he gave us 10, and now you only want one? So Jesus read them off to him. He read only, or told him, of six. 
The other four he didn't mention, right? He only spoke of six. And those six have all to do with your relationship with people around you. The other four dealt with how you deal with God. You shall not have another God before me. You won't have a graven image. You observe the Sabbath. But here, these, these six deal with how you treat your neighbor. He said, you shall not murder. You don't go around killing people you know. You shall not commit adultery. You don't take other people's wives or husbands. You don't steal. Okay? Thou shall not bear false witness, lie on other people. You honor your mother and father. And then you love your neighbor as yourself. Simple. And the rich young man said, oh, I got that. I done those since I was a little boy. I, I followed the law. What Jesus wanted him to see is that you might follow the letter of the law, but you don't follow the principle that's behind it. You might be doing everything that God has told you to do, but if it's not in your heart because you love him, then you miss the point. You see, some of us will do exactly what we're on our job. If they say do A, B, C, and D, we'll just do A, B, C, and D. And if something comes along like an E or an F, you say, no, mm, that, ain't my, that ain't my job description. But if you, if you love to make that money and realize that that job depends on you doing E and F, you'll understand that it's not all about being precise. It's about fulfilling what is needed to be done. If I go through life and all I do is just the exact letter of the law, then I'm going to step over all kinds of people. If you think about it, if you wanted to be rich, you could go through life and never hand a dime out to anybody else. And it'd be all about gathering it to yourself. And that's one of the problems I have with the society today. It's all about me and what I can get. And I don't want to pay no more taxes, but that taxes helps other people. But no, I don't want to pay no more because I want it for myself. You know, I thought about it the other day. They were talking about having a lottery for people who have the vaccine. I haven't heard what the amount was. Have y'all heard? How much? $10. Oh, a million dollars. A million dollars. All right. You get a million dollars for taking a shot. What are you going to do with a million dollars that's going to make your life so much better than serving God. You see, we can gain all these things, but when we come to the end of life, you can't buy your way into heaven. You know, if you had $50 million and you ended up with a cancer or some ailment, and you go to Duke Hospital, they'll eat up all that money. Amen. It don't take long. Amen. But if you are right with God at the end of life, you will have a place for you. You'll have a place for you. Look at what he's saying in these, in these words. This, this young man wanted a quick, simple solution. How do I get eternal life? And when Jesus quoted those scriptures, he said, I've already done those. But I'm wealthy. So Jesus says, go sell everything you've got. 
Now, think about it now. Jesus didn't say the first four commandments, which were about God. But what he did when he said, go sell what you had, he attacked the idol God that the young man had. His, his riches were his idol. And he said, go sell what you got and come and follow me. And it says he went away sorrowful because he had built his life around those things. And that's the problem with a lot of us. Those things mean more to us than life itself. We would take a million dollars today if, 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 if that was a choice of 10 more years of life in the position that you're in or a million dollars in five years. A lot of y'all would take the million and try your best to spend that million dollars in five years. That wouldn't you? You go out and you say, well, I'm, I'm living it up. But at the end of that five years, what have you got? But if you live a life that's pleasing to God, he said, sell what you have, come and follow me, and you'll gain the kingdom. Then he went on and, and talked about a rich man. How hard it is for a rich man to get into heaven. It was because of the attitude. Because they would honor those possessions more than those around them. Today in this world, we honor people who are rich. We think they, and, and just as in the day of Jesus, people thought that if you were rich, you were blessed by God. Oh, he's rich. God must have blessed him. Uh-uh. All of God's blessings are not tied to riches. Health is, is tied. Peace of mind is tied. Joy is tied to God. If, if, if you want those things, then you're going to follow Jesus. But if you, if you think that you've got to tie everything and say, if you're not rich, then you must be cursed. You got it all wrong. You see, because if you look at who Jesus hung around, it was the downcast. It was those who people thought little of, but he was there with them. And that's where I wanna be. I wanna be with whoever Jesus wants to be with. You see, because when life is over, it's over in this realm. But we go to another realm, you see, called eternal life, where people used to sing that song, I'm sending up my timber every day. I'm, I'm living my life so that I can live again. I'm living in such a way that I'm pleasing to God. Now, I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm, I'm, I have not hit perfection, and I don't expect to be perfect in this life. But I'm striving. I'm trying my best. I want to be what God would have me to be in this life. And if it means I go with holes in my pockets, I'm happy with that. As long as I got Jesus, I don't need nothing else. So the disciples were concerned. If these men, who apparently are blessed by God because they are rich, don't make it in, who's going to make it? <laughs> Jesus says, with men, this is impossible. <laughs> but with God, all things are possible. See, we got to put our faith in God. We can't put it in uh, riches or, or fame or anything. Our faith has to be in God. 
that God can work it out in our favor. When we go through hard times, God is in the midst with us and he will carry us through to the very end. If we just hold on and not give up. You know, I said, I'm not perfect. I have days when I'm down, when I doubt myself. But then when I started studying and getting ready to come before you, that's when the word of the Lord starts speaking to me and starts saying, buck up, be my man, I'm with you. And that's when I get encouraged, you know? And, and that's the thing, I realized that if I go long without hearing the word, I start getting weak. I'm, I'm like Popeye the sailor man. He had to have that can of spinach in his pocket. And when he got in trouble, he popped it out. I got to pop out the word of God and, and strengthen myself because I can't make it by myself. I've got to depend and lean on God and you see, sometimes people look at preachers and pastors and bishops and all of the titles and think that they've got it made. I'm here to tell you, we're just men and women who've been placed in position to tell you about Jesus. And we have the same afflictions as you, but we have the word of God. And with that word of God, we can strengthen ourselves. And it's for you for you to open up that word. And we are to come here to worship him in spirit and in truth. And open up that word together and see what it reveals for us that day. I pray that God has opened up your eyes. That you might see that it's not all about you. It's not, it wasn't all about the rich young ruler. It was about his relationship. You see, we can come in here and sing and dance and, and do backflips, but if it's doing nothing out there in the world to those who need it, it's all for naught. We've got to be out in the world telling people about Jesus. That's the only thing that's gonna save them. Us feeling good about ourselves is only helping us. We've got to be helping others out there in the world. Amen. The choir is going to give us a selection. We pray that this word falls on good ground and it's what you needed for today. As I prepare to take my seat and listen to this beautiful choir, I ask that you keep them in prayer. This, this is a group that had been sung together what, in a year? Over a year. And they've come together today. It's been more than a year though, right? A year and a couple months. Yeah, March. So, so, you know, it's hard to get people back. You know, I look around and I say, where is everybody? Well, we're not gonna get everybody back. But those who are faithful to the very end, they will see Jesus. Amen, amen.
Thank God for you and for all who have participated today in making this program go through as smoothly as it did. We're so thankful to see all of you out and to hear the voices of Siloam one more time. Amen. We have been truly blessed. We ask you to keep in mind those on your sick and shut-in list on the back of your program. Be sure to lift them up in prayer. And if you have time to give them a call, if that's available to you, to call them and just check on them and um, let them know that the church is in prayer for them. On just a reminder, we will have church conference next Saturday. 12 o'clock we want to we haven't had one in over a year so we need to get together and see how everything is going okay now let's look to the Lord to be dismissed father we thank you for another day for these your people we ask now that you would bless them and keep them draw them closer to you father and when all is said and done, Father, that they know you as their Savior, as their God, and that in knowing you, Father, 
they know what they must do, how they must reach others for you, Father. Grant them your peace, Father. And, and until we see each other again, Father, be with them. Grant them your peace. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling, his love, his joy, go with you henceforth, now and forever. In the name of Jesus, we pray and ask it all. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you.